Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Twilight Epiphanies Talk Radio with Cindy Magnuson, and the show is about to begin. So, slow down, take a seat, put your feet up, and maybe take some notes, because this show is about you, it's for you, and it is designed to help you receive exactly what you need to be a happier and healthier you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight in Episode 7 of Twilight Epiphanies Talk Radio. And tonight, I have a special guest, David TJ, a Vedic Thai Yoga Massage and Bodywork Practitioner, instructor, and owner of Thai Love Yoga. And now, as a practitioner myself of Thai Yoga Bodywork, as I began to practice, especially when I was doing my initial practice sessions, as I invited people in, I heard it often expressed that people had not heard of this ancient practice before or maybe only briefly. So I've asked David to come on tonight and share his journey, his experiences, his work, and his wealth of information and wisdom with us. To my guest, David. David TJ has been teaching yoga for over 20 years. He is a licensed massage therapist and instructor and a lover of conscious dance and kundalini yoga. He is on staff at the Vedic Conservatory as an instructor of Thai yoga massage and is the owner of Thai Love Yoga, which is based in Dallas, Texas, where he and his sweetheart, Misty Leah, are passionate about spiritual growth exploration, playfulness, connection, adventuring, traveling, community, and teaching. They have been together nationally over the years, Vedic Thai yoga bodywork, relationship workshops, yoga, meditation, and energy healing. It is their greatest joy to share the best things they learn with others. They love vegan and raw foods, the Dallas International Film Festival, and have a very priceless cat named Pepper. David will be also speaking and on behalf for Leah tonight, who is an energy healing practitioner, also a licensed massage therapist, an animal advocate, guardian, and intuitive. She employs a loving mix of subtle energy techniques to create balance for you on all levels, the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. Her techniques include creative visualization, cranial sacral therapy, tuning fork, essential oils, crystal energies, toe reading, Reiki, and on and on and on up to breath work. They have both a wonderful variety of beautiful practices, and I'm so looking forward to talking to them. So I'm going to open up and say hello to David. Hello, David. Hello. Ah, Hello very there. good. I hear you loud and clear. I'm, I'm here. And, um, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, I would I'm love I'm kind of nervous because it's my first time. I, I think that's awesome. Trust me, I'm, I'm doing okay. a lot of first, first year myself. And um, I want <laughs> okay. to open up with, with a little bit of a story very quickly as to how I met you. Okay. So I had friended Misty online, and she was holding one of her jewelry giveaways. And so I decided to enter, and as I was entering, I actually had a premonition that I was going to win, which always makes it kind of awkward because then you're thinking, should I still should I still enter because I know I might win? Oh, nice. And the notion, and the notion was yes, go ahead and and enter, and I did win um, some beautiful earrings. Um, Leah, thank you very much, um, yeah, Misty she Leah. Yeah, that story. I, Yes, it was wonderful. And that was the first thread of connection to you, 
Misty and Thai Yoga Massage. And after that, uh, Thai Yoga Massage was only maybe an impression uh, that I had had once before. A couple times a client had mentioned how much they loved it, and I knew that some lady was working at a facility here with her feet, and it was so fascinating to me. But I had never seen it practiced. You further inspired me that when the opportunity a few months ago opened up, I was able to take my first course. And as soon as I took the course, even within students practicing on me, I had two very big emotional releases. Come around to here. I'm reading on your website and um, verbatim, this is truth as it was. I was experiencing emotional releases simply from reading your blog articles that both of you have written and the other data about your work. You have a very, very highly developed, beautiful presence. And I just want to say a personal thank you to you for being a thread of connection with me, wired in here synchronistically to be part of my journey. I feel like I've come home in this. And so thank you very much. I super appreciate both of you. And with that, I would love to have you begin with telling the audience here, um, how is it that you got involved with Vedic Thai Yoga Massage? What brought you from massage through the stages into here and how you work with it all? And if you can summarize then at the end of it, you have a beautiful name for your company, Thai Love Yoga. And so I'd love okay. to hear about I'd love to hear about that name then as you as you bring us up to the present here. Okay. Well thank you. You were as you're introducing me, um, I was getting chills and emotional myself. And um oh. first of all I wanna say first of all I wanna say, uh, should I wait? Can they hear us both as we talk together, or should I wait till you finish or whatever? Um, I will. It's best to wait. Okay, I got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so thank you. Um, how did I get started? Well, I'm a yoga instructor too for over 22 years now, and that's a long story too. <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. From uh, my teacher uh, now, Mukti Michael Buck, in 2006. And at that time, I had been teaching over for 10 years. A friend from my church invited me to this course. She found Mukti online and invited him to come to Dallas. And I said, and she was a good friend. She was a massage therapist. I wasn't yet a massage therapist, but I taught yoga. And I was intrigued by some of the photos I saw and what she said about it. And when I got to that course, like you said, it was very emotional. And unlike anything I had felt in my body before, I knew right away I wanted to be doing what my teacher was doing. And it's wonderful now that I'm doing it now, you know, this many years later, I'm teaching for him at his school. It was just a beautiful practice. I felt things in my body, release, healings, tears, and just just incredible. Friendships, too, made from the people in that course still have the friendships. And it was just totally amazing. Um, and I started going to workshops. Oh, the first thing after that first workshop... I just started practicing on people and then, but I decided to become a massage therapist because I wanted to do this professionally. I wanted to kind of have all my ducks in a row, do it yes. precise, you know, correctly or precisely. So I went to massage yes. school and got my massage license in 2008. And then I started going to, I took my first vacation in many, many years. I had gone through a divorce, and I went on a vacation and since since I divorced. And I asked some of my clients to support me in, in this new chapter, and they did. And so I had every year, basically in either October or like May, 
I went to Florida to visit my teacher for seven days and practice and learn and soak up everything I could. Wow. And then one day, one one of those times I heard people talking about the, um, wanting to, well, there were several teachers that he had trained there. And I kind of got an interest in that because, you know, this was something I felt I was good at and it was fun for me to do. I kept going back to it. And so I asked him if I could become one of his teachers and how. So he said, well, do this, this, and this. And so I did this, that, and that. And <laughs> <laughs> here I am. Mm-hmm. Aww. It's, it was amazing. Still an amazing journey. It's really great. And then about time of yoga, our mm-hmm. name. We, I had a name called, uh, it was Amrita Healing Arts. It was a combination of something I had seen, Healing Arts, and then Amrita, which is a, a met divine, um, oh, it's nectar of the gods, okay? Mm-hmm. Immortality of yeah. the gods, this nectar that comes when in deep states of meditation. And the thing is that in deep state, you can get in deep state of meditation in a massage or in a Thai massage. So mm-hmm. I love that name. But then it became, when me and Leah got together, it became, we needed to change, we wanted to change it, make it more of our own together. And I knew I wanted the word Thai in our name. In our name. And I knew I wanted the word yoga because that's what I am. I'm those two things. And probably five minutes into our discussion of what our new name could be, it just popped into my head. I saw the thing, you know, I heart New York, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I love yoga. Thai love yoga just popped into my head. We went, I looked all over the Internet searching for, I thought, this is amazing. This is a perfect name. And why hasn't someone got it? I (laughs) went and looked all over. I looked for the dot-com, and nobody had it. I looked all over the place on the internet and no one had it. And I was completely amazed that no one had taken this beautiful name yet. And it came, came, became ours. And Leah designed this wonderful two-tone green heart where it's kind of connected and kind of little, uh, it's just a beautiful green heart. You know? yeah. Her favorite color is green. And so that was our logo. We were born. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you for that. Uh, yes, I, I want. I I love your website. It's very beautiful, very well done, very beautiful, very peaceful. I highly recommend everybody visiting it. Mm. And so, uh, uh, now um, Vedic Thai yoga massage, Thai yoga massage in general, is a little bit of a newbie in the West here. So. Um, could you open us up with telling us what makes this type of massage body work different than traditional, uh, let's say, you know, massage type work and uh, talk, you know, a little bit more about what, what, what uh, components exist in this, what types of work are you doing in it? you know, such as the compressions and the reflexology. We would love to hear about that. Okay. Well, we've, many of us have had a, a Swedish massage where we are kind of relaxed under a sheet with most of our clothing off or as much as we dare take off and mm-hmm. lotions and oils and smells, um, maybe hot towels or rocks and things. Um, on the table. The table is up above the ground uh, so the therapist can get to the person easier, you know, depending on the height of the therapist. They have to, you have to be on a table um, to, to do this, to reach. Thai massage is done on the floor, usually. On a mat, on like a futon style mat. Could be about the size of a king, um, full-size bed, queen-size bed. Different kind of mats they use. They could use rubber, or we use these cotton futons, which are very comfortable. And, of course, 
Smooth massage uses flowing strokes. A little bit of stretching, of course, stretching, comp- some compression. Uh, but the main thing about Thai massage is has no oils, and you leave your clothes on, and it's done on the floor. So that's quite a big difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, although, even w- when you're in a Swedish massage, you're covered with a sheet, some people feel safer than that because on Thai massage, I'm walking on you, I'm twisting you, I'm kind of all over the place. You know, mm-hmm. it's a very intimate massage. That's why it's wonderful for couple for couples, and we can talk about that a little bit later. Because you're doing it, you're being stretched and pulled around, almost like some of the things are like yoga positions. Many many of them are. So it's mm-hmm. also called called Thai yoga body work, as as you know, Thai mm-hmm. yoga massage. Lazy man yoga is a thing because I just want to lay there and relax and I'm being moved around mm-hmm. stretched. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the compressions, the compressions are done all over the body, uh, down different lines. And working in a, you know, a methodical rocking motion, flowing motion, just like in uh, the gliding with, with uh, Swedish massage, but the gliding and flowing is, and put you to rest, but the compression here, it also gets deeper into the, it goes into the bones, you know, and the joints. We work a lot with the joints and also have what we call uh, resistance therapy, so we can hold like the shoulder down or the ankle and have the, have the person move their shoulder actively against our resistance, and that helps yeah. get deeper into the joint and release it, so... That's a little bit about that. <laughs> yes, and and so physically, that is the difference part of it. And now, can you take us into the consciousness expression? And as you mentioned, it, it was immediately for both of us experiencing a, a very emotional releasing space. It was immediate. I, I and the welling. Okay. Well, apparently um, we have lost David's call. It dropped. So um, we will ha- wait till he is able to call back in again. He is calling in. Okay. David, are you there? Oh, okay. Let me open up for him. That is still connecting. So he is reconnecting. And so we're going to talk when he is reconnected here about consciousness because consciousness is a specific aspect of what is different about Thai yoga massage. Hello again, David. I'm back. Thank you. Yes, no problem yes, sorry at about all. That. That's okay. It happens. And I was just continuing on a little bit about um, the consciousness aspect of it because it was so significantly different. I was I was so highly impressed because this is just a student who's working on me. And I, at the time I went to the class, I was experiencing a challenging space. But the depth of what happened inside me only rarely has happened in healing sessions for me. And this was a student. She was a massage therapist already. But this was a student. So even it was the entire presence of the room and, of course, the space that the instructor was holding, the energetic vibration. And I felt it well up from the deepest part of me until it came up and out. I literally said, oh, you triggered it. Here it comes. And, you know, I just let it come out, that that deep emotional space, that despair, that pain, that hurt. And so uh, I would like you, if you can, um, you know, if you want to uh, talk about that um, space of you had written the most beautiful words um, and said that Thai yoga massage is viewed as a martial art of healing and is reported to manifest instant positive results. In Thailand, body work is utilized medicinally as a cherished and revered indulgence to remedy the prominent social ailments such as emotional stress and physical inertia. It inspires the soul and tranquilizes the body. So um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, this, uh, this space that is this consciousness space that you go into? What do you experience? 
Uh, you know what, too, I want yeah. to introduce I'll just tell you a quick little story. My my second granddaughter, when I worked with her, she stared at my face the entire time I worked with her because she wanted to know where was Nana at when she was doing this. So, David, bring us into your world when you're doing Thai yoga massage. Okay. Well, first of all, that quote that you read is actually attributed to my teacher Mukti. So okay. Um, but I and we have it on our website as that of course. But thank you. But I, I very much I always use that quote in all of my classes a lot, especially if we're doing a two or three day course. I use that because it so eloquently tells what it's about, and. We use, in Thai massage, we use, you know, we use repetitions, we use numbers, we want to be consistent and fluid and rhythmic, and we use our breath, okay? So, I think what happens when we have, when we have ourselves moving in a fluid manner, consistently being present with our client, and we have repetitions of numbers. We do a lot of things in threes. And also we have mm-hmm. where we begin, we, get, we begin with a light pass. So we start just investigating the body, feeling where the obstructions are, feeling where the signs of, you know, disturbance are. We, we're feeling for them. And then the second pass, that's called entering, that's called opening the channel. So we, we just kind of open ourselves to the body open the person to the bo- to our our hands and open ourselves to the person and then we enter the channel which is the second pass and again in a flowing rhythmic manner so we go deeper the second time and the yeah. third time we go somewhere in between okay or we could go deeper still or we could even hold there are, basically you can do three things with your compression you can enter deeper you can release or you can hold. Those are three things you can do. I was mm-hmm. taught that by my teacher also. It makes a lot of sense because holding something, like you hold a yoga pose and really get into it and really feel it, you know, and breathe into it, and the conscious breath, of course, and that can really get the juice going. And then when you release it, that can really just have the emotions come up, I think, and the, and the, the flow comes back. This is, it's really mm-hmm. fun doing this because I'm, uh, <laughs> things are coming out mm-hmm. of me that are really neat. <laughs> um, so, and then the third pass is called closing the channel. Okay, so if we do just three. So, and when I'm teaching, I'll just show those three, kind of a pattern, you know, one, two, three, repetitions, numbers. So, like, do something in a note for a number, like, do it seven times if you're like rotating an ankle or something, do it. Through seven times or three times or longer, and so if you're if you're counting, and you're being with the person as you're counting, you're 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 present. You have to be present. You if you're just moving without counting, you're not present. And so I I read some one of my favorite yoga teachers um, from long ago. I was blessed and lucky enough to have this teacher. Her name is Donna Farhi from New Zealand. And she was one of my first workshops that I went to when I was a brand new teacher. And her, she talked about presence, being present. And then my teacher now, Mukti, when I talk to him, he talks about presence is the healer. Okay? If we just put our hands on someone and be present with them, maybe look into their eyes or just hold them, there going to be some there's going to be some healing taking place there's going to be some intimacy and some connection just by being present listening listening even if they're not talking being present and i forget that you know i'm in a relationship and sometimes i forget that i'm not present and uh things go haywire but it's still <laughs> um it's um it's fun and i'm grateful for leah for um Keeping me on track and and uh, putting up with me because <laughs> she's wonderful. Yes, yes, and a shout out, hello to you, Leah. 
Yeah. Uh, that is <laughs> that is wonderful. Uh, a beautiful description. Um, so you were. Uh, maybe we can also briefly talk about. Uh, there are different types of, uh, like you have it listed as Vedic yoga. Thai yoga massage and maybe you can just mm-hmm. briefly give us I'm going to go to a commercial break first of all okay and then when we come back you can maybe just give us a little bit of an overview so let's say the listening audience someone here is going to venture into uh, getting some body work done what might they look for what different types are, are out there and what might they expect maybe what is your favorite obviously what you are doing because that's where we end yeah. up working with um, and to just give us a little bit of an idea of what makes things different. So uh, I am going to just okay. uh, um, mute you here, and then uh, I will be back in approximately four minutes. Okay? Okay. Feminine Frequency Radio Network hosts shows seven days a week. Call in to listen live. 929-477-1183 and dial 1 to connect to the studio to ask a question or listen online via blogtalkradio.com backslash Feminine Frequency Radio Network. Organic Frequency Radio Show is one and a half hour live chat with Stephanie and Oksana and their lovely guests about the nature of existence and holistic way of living here and now and perhaps even after. Join us every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Call-in number to listen live is 929-477-1183 and to ask a question, press 1 to connect to the studio. Our guests share their stories and walking path of their healing along with services that they have developed and packaged for the rest of the world to experience and benefit from. We're here to hold a space for an exchange of experiences for the purpose of evolvement and expansion of consciousness. Mother, father, teacher, healer, trendsetter, or innovator concerned with our future generation? Come join the family at Small Voices Big World, where we talk to leading experts in child development, care, compassion, friendship, and community. Join us live Saturdays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Feminine Frequency Radio Network. We hope you join us as we spark new ideas that will shape our future and the small voices that will create this big world. Hello and welcome. You are now entering the corridor of Twilight Epiphany Talk Radio with your host, Cindy Magnuson. Premiering Thursday evenings, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Feminine Frequency Radio Network, you are invited on a talk radio journey to the center of self. Join us as Cindy guides you, the listeners, in sensory and perception upgrades where revelations and golden epiphanies pierce the veils of illusion. Don't miss this opportunity for your next dose of Twilight Epiphany. Okay, hello David again. And as we left off, Yes, hello. Okay, so as we left off before the commercial, I had asked David if he would talk to us about the different types of Thai yoga practice. Uh, I can see that uh, you offer on your site 
also different variations of work. And as well, I was asking uh, David to talk to the listening audience about if they were going for a Thai yoga massage, what they might see in different variances. Okay. Different variances of Thai yoga massage. Well, each practitioner is, of course, different. I learned from my teacher, and he, he learned from a certain teacher, and he has gone to Thailand many times. Uh, so he's got a background in Swedish. He's got a background in um, energy work. Of course, he did chair massage. I do that too. Um, mm. Some shiatsu, I think. Uh, other types of body work that are similar to Thai massage are like shiatsu. Some of the things are very similar to Thai massage. It's Japan, I think. And then there's ashiatsu, which is shortened to uh, shortened to ashi, which uses the feet and oil. So people use their feet to glide around. I know someone who does that, but I don't know. There are the different types of Thai massage. Like in Thailand, you would go, like every school is different. And then, but there's like a northern s- style schools. There's a southern style schools. That's the extent of my knowledge on those. My teacher okay. has learned a lot of that and come from, um, he's very open to intuition, using your intuition for what the person mm-hmm. needs. Because mm-hmm. some schools are very strict. Some schools are very strict in going through the process and going through the body in a certain way. You know, A, B, C, D, you know, putting together something from Ikea, from the little, mm-hmm. not, you know, nodules. But he, uh, many times in his workshops, and I tried to do this too, if someone else is doing something different than what we're doing, I try to investigate that and see if it works. I'll, I'll yeah. bring attention to that. If it's like, well, if it's like way off or something, if they're hurting the person, I want to correct it. But if it's different and it's fun and unusual and it's working, we want to include it. So mm-hmm. I think that is part of part of what we use. We always have to be connected to what the person needs. There is a pattern in what I do and I teach. You know, like the patterns of three. And the different moves, just like yoga, but everyone's body is different, and you can get into the positions from any different any any way. You know, you can get into a standing position different ways. Mm-hmm. So, does that make sense, or that, does that make any sense? Yeah. Yes, and it is what I was experiencing as the instructor was teaching in uh, my yoga, Thai yoga class, and um, noticing how you have slightly different variances, and of course, then looking at YouTube uh, videos, how there are different variances, and then of course, I've heard things about mm-hmm. starting with the feet or not starting with the feet, um, should, and yeah. then there there seem to be maybe some different thoughts on um my yoga instructor was talking, Thai yoga instructor was talking about how his teacher worked a lot because he channeled. And then uh, another practitioner that I was listening to, she worked a lot because she was in Thailand learning and she primarily worked with being able to do 12 hour days of Thai yoga massage without extending her energy. And I was so highly impressed. And I I realized that is exactly what is taking place um, while I'm in these positions, working to sway into them and fall into them. And I love that space. I, I'm, I, as I was saying, yeah. um, and posted, I, I'm interested in now in, and I have already, I snuck it in. So I've snuck it into Reiki okay. with, I've snuck it into massage. Um, and I can sneak it into seated talk therapy work across from a person because I can sway within myself, go into that presence because it puts me in a space. Um, I really like it. I, I have an affinity with wind. And uh, so the swaying was very beautiful to me. And then of mm-hmm. course, 
that space where you are re- we are releasing our our ab- abdomen and our muscles, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all the way through the tan tian, and just releasing into that energetic in itself. And then, of course, as you were saying, to move with breath. So, yes, that's very helpful yeah. for people to see that they're going to wander into some um, some different variances, and there are some slightly different experiences with, of course, a centralized you know, root group. And I really like the three experience you were talking about. Um, Three in numerology is a creation space because uh, three lines together make the first form. So I relate to the three that way. And maybe part of what's uh, happening is that creation space, that third time, that, that deeper connection. So I can feel you. Um, you know, uh, something that I don't have a lot of um, uh, information on yet and experience with is uh, the sun lines. So uh, do you, can you talk to us a little bit about what sun lines mean uh, and when we are compressing them, maybe what is both physiologically and energetically taking place? Yeah, a little bit. Like the sun lines are... Some of them are, I think, very specific, and they're basically energy channels, um, different parts of the body that travel, like, from the head down, maybe through the shoulder to the arms, or several there, maybe they go to each finger. We're focused on the marmas, too, which are different points, usually at joints and at places, too. And so just imagine these these channels, like tubes, all over your body. And at different joints or places, uh, there's a marma or energy center, an actual place. And they're connecting all, the, all over the place. What we try to do, press on these, and we will travel, you know, up and down the arm, methodically pressing on the lines and the, and the marmas. We're trying to get these to to be unblocked. And basically, dormant energy is stored in these marmas and lines. Like, like if you have a hose and it's clogged, full of mud or something. Uh, if you have an old car and it's, you know, oil is stuck or something, the gunk is in there, you want to clean it out. You want to get somebody to help clean it out. So we're basically just cleaning the body up. So it can be refreshed and energized, and we can like have a new outlook on life. Because if you're stuck, if your body is stuck and you're feeling lethargic, you know, um, <laughs> if you're sitting around, maybe you're depressed because you're stuck. You can have a new outlook on your life if you're feeling better, you know, if you're if you're unstuck. So yes. just like you said, the emotional component. There's a lot of physical. You know, the physical and the emotional is so connected to the mind, the you know, mind and body connection. And it's like so what it's about here. Mm-hmm. So we're basically just we're just basically taking the glue out, taking the gunk out and letting the natural flow of energy, the natural love and, um, you know, generosity and life energy, the prana. We're letting it flow because it can be stuck sometimes from, you know, just our body sticking or our emotions because we're thinking uh, stinky thoughts or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, very true. Uh, okay. And um, which um, sort of sparked uh, me to thinking about uh, – uh, Leah has a really nice article about light touch versus heavy touch. And uh, my own experiences here in working with massage clients and massage clients who are seeking that deep tissue type work. And um, I get to sneak in Reiki and now I get to sneak in Thai yoga massage. So, uh, yes. And they love it. They absolutely love it. So the space of, um, she has a beautiful article that uh, talks about light touch versus heavy touch. And uh, 
Can you Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? Well, light touch if virtue is very much light versus heavy. Well, yeah, a lot of people do want to experience, you know, when I do chair massage, people say, you can't hurt me. It's like, well, yes, Mm -hmm. I can. Just better Mm -hmm. be careful here. So, but I'm, I like intense touch, but it just depends on place. It also depends on where you're being touched. So, some places can take more of a heavier touch than other places. And like on the head and stuff, it can be wonderful to be very light on the temples and around the neck, uh, in the front of the neck, and the back is can be more intense, I guess. Uh, but a lighter touch can also just be, like I'm saying, be present and just hold. Also, just have like almost no touch is very light. Okay, so like we have a, a practice where we walk up the legs. We do the feet in a rhythmic pattern, and then we walk palm walk up the legs to the knees. And there's different uh, levels of sensitivity. One is like the aura level, like Reiki, where you're not even touching the legs. Mm-hmm. And circling, you're doing palm circles on the knees, and then the Lighter is just a skin level, so you're just touching the body and the and the pants or whatever they have on, and circling very lightly, and then you just can go go into deeper and grinding, getting at the muscle level, and then you can go even more like picking up the patella itself, to doing like a tiger claw on the kneecap, picking it up and grinding it around, so show shaking their whole body with that mm. circling mm-hmm. of the kneecaps. And so those are four levels of sensitivity we talk about in Thai mm. massage. Wow. The aura, le- aura level, like n- no touching, skin level, muscle, and then muscle and tendon and stuff like that, and then bone or organ. You know, you can go in deep to the organs. So yes. those are really four things you can do. And they're all relevant, and they're all wonderful, okay? And they're all needed. Mm. So... And beautiful. So again, the best of everything in there. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Okay. And um, so you also offer the uh, not only workshops and instruction in for people to learn to do Vedic Thai yoga massage. You also have relationship workshops and. Uh, I really like what um, you had to say about your relationship workshop. I don't know if I have it written down here, but it was um, off of the top of my head. Uh, you had noted in that it's not just for couples only, but it's for um, anyone that you're working with, any family, relatives, friends, coworkers, relationship, Thai yoga workshop. Can you tell us about those workshops? Uh, You talked about, uh, I saw on your website, the different sacred circles that you hold and uh, gazing. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, It's your mystical relationship workshop. Yes. (laughs) Mystical relationship. The healing, yeah. Mystical relationship, the healing power of connection. And we have taught this uh, several times. Uh, in Dallas and at also the Sedona Yoga Festival where we have taught uh, the last five years, which has been really fun. Um, So, you know, it's basically a wonderful experience to help people improve and enhance their relationship. So, and mystical is, you know, kind of out there, um, I'm not sure how you would would define mystical itself, but we love the definition of mystical, and because it's like very, it's mysterious, and you're mm-hmm. not sure of it. So mm. we don't want to be in a relationship that's just same old, same old, and we're bored, you know. So we want to have fun in our relationship. When I when I met Leah, she was the most fun thing, and she mm. still is the most fun 
relationship I've ever had. And so we we want to try to bring fun into people's lives, as you shared uh, from the bio you talked about. Mm-hmm. So the tools that we use and are taken from, you know, what we both are good at and what we both learned. Um, Leah is a laughter yoga instructor, and she learned that many years ago before – I knew her, mm-hmm. and she's so silly and fun with that. And she also did that in, in Sedona, and it's really Aww. fun. It really got her out of her, her shell doing that. And then the Thai body work, which is just, you know, partner work, and you can, like, the the presence and the touch and becoming intimate uh, with someone, and we do it in a fun way. And then the sacred, the sacred space ritual, which is sort of the – Along with the Thai body work, which is, um, well, everything is equally wonderful. So sacred space, I learned that from a tantric workshop I did long ago, where you sit facing each other and you look at each other's eyes and you do a little ritual with your palms together in namaste hands. Mm -hmm. And you do a little ritual together and you create a bubble around each other for this for this space. So you sit facing each other and gaze into each other's eyes. And then you basically say, I'm going to bring, I'm going to take out frustration, I'm going to take out anger, and you physically do it. You just say, mm-hmm. you just use your hand and you reach into the circle and you take it out, you throw it out. And then you bring in something that you want. So it's a mm-hmm. ritual using physical movement and you bring things in. And then once you bring things in, take things out, you appreciate each other. So each person goes, they t- you take turns, and you appreciate something about each other, and you say it, and you take turns. And there's a few other steps. And this is the beginning of connecting and being present. And it can lead to, you know, deeper communication. It can lead to more physical communication, um, intimacy. So it can be a very wonderful icebreaker for friends or anybody because you can you need it's a wonderful way to communicate to a person that you don't even know. I've done a thing that calls we also do soul gazing where you just gaze into someone's eyes. A lot of people may have done that, and it's really intimate looking into someone uh, someone's eyes. This is also part of what we do. And, of course, we're doing it with the sacred space ritual. And it's just really nice to see. Into, you really see into someone. Intimacy is, you know, into me see. So I have to use that old thing about that. And so we do that. We do some other communicating and exercises, which are fun. And, you know, we've done it for just an hour, an hour and a half or two. We've done it for four hours. So depending on what we want to do, uh, we can we can make it any length that we want. So it's really fun and uh, helps people to connect and see the lighter side and and the deeper side of it, of their relationships. You know, connect the two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I wanted to go. I want to go. <laughs> okay. Sign me up. Come on. I'll be there. I will tell you. Right. I have already. I have already written to uh, Misty and said yes. I will be there someday. So when the opportunity opens up again, I will be joining your workshops most definitely. Uh, right. And so um, also. Uh, you have a lot of um, free gatherings that you do around town. So um, can you tell us a little bit about what you offer in the way of practices around town? Oh, yeah. Well, we have a monthly practice that is, well, it's free for students of ours that have been uh, to a weekend workshop, either two or three day workshop, which we teach, and it's uh, we teach uh, CEC workshops, 
um, massage therapists and yoga teachers can get credit through the official channels for that. And anybody who comes to there can be can come to our monthly practice for free. Otherwise, it's twenty bucks. Sometimes we even just invite people, you know, off the street. No, not really, but any people can come. <laughs> different different things. We invite we'll invite teachers from we'll invite teachers from certain places. But uh, I, we've been doing that together for six years. Leah came to my second one. And that's where we met. Oh, okay. And so, um, as she was leaving, I really I noticed her, and I knew that she did energy work. We talked a little bit, and so I asked her for a trade, and uh, it's a long story after that. <laughs> that's how that's how that's how we got kind of connected. There were some things that happened before that too, but she heard about me. But she came to this. My second one in a friend oh, I had boy. started in a friend's house. And so I've been doing this most of the time except for like holidays and some summers while we're gone. But for almost seven years I think, six to seven years. And it's just a really fun. It's a every fourth basically every fourth Sunday of the month in the in the late afternoon. And we simply practice. Anybody can come and practice. Beautiful. Yes, I had seen you have so much going on on your website, and uh, it looks like some new programs also coming up. I see you both are talking about Kundalini Yoga also. Oh, yeah. We've, we've gone through that. We're going through that training together. Oh, and then, the, you know, we do also do not just the monthly workshop, but we do workshops around town at different mm-hmm. yoga studios. We've done those. Um <laughs> And then there's every Labor Day, there's free day of yoga, which is a Mon- Labor Day is on a Monday. And it's a whole weekend of of uh, different free yoga and stuff. And so we do several classes on free day of yoga. And this this month, this Labor Day coming up, September, we're going to be doing our first free um, Kundalini class together. Oh. And. I love Kundalini. We fell in love with Kundalini. Leah fell in love with it before me at Studio Studio Samadhi in Dallas with a lady named Donna Banks. Her name is now Samadhi Banks. And so when she had a teacher training, she Leah signed us up. And I said, yeah, let's do it together. It's really wonderful to have a partner that we can do stuff together with. It's so it's so much fun that we can have so many things that we can do and, and share and love love together. And so I when I I fell in love with Kundalini Yoga when I went to the Sedona Yoga Festival the second year. We were teaching and we went to Anna Brett and Robbie Singh's class. And they I had heard about them. They have a bunch of DVDs out. But I was so energized and relaxed at the same time. I felt like a, a lightning bolt had hit me. And then I also I felt like I just got up from Javasana at the same time, if you can imagine that. So sure. I was energized and, and peaceful, and I wanted some more of that. And so I started adding a little bit to my classes, doing the things that I remembered, you know, and then we started, then we found this training, and we've been to one week together, and we're in the middle, we're on day 32, I think, of a 40-day sadhana, which is, we get up at 4 a.m., we start at about 4.30, some days it's a little bit later, not, not much much later, but two to two and a half hours of kundalini practice, and Kundalini songs and chants that we chant along to. Yes. And it's made all the difference in a, in our relationship. It's really fun. Oh, oh I highly wow. recommend that. <laughs> oh, yes. I have had a little bit of experience with a friend uh, who is in Florida, and then uh, some of the classes there uh, at Kundalini Yoga in Florida there was uh, – 
broadcasted live, so I was getting up um, sometimes and participating until then. Uh, there, I had an accident, accidentally broke a rib, so I that was interrupted, oh. and I had to wait a little while before I could do it again. But um, And I have not participated again, uh, but luckily have an opportunity now where I have a uh, – my son is going to work very early in the morning. So we are now getting up early mm-hmm. in the morning and Kundalini yoga is on my mind again. So I did definitely want to bring that up. And um, uh, so it's a different energetic space than the Thai yoga massage. Yes. So of course, Thai yoga massage uh, is a, you know, a partnership one person is receiving as the, as the practitioner gives. Um, Kundalini yoga, um, you can do it alone or in a class setting like regular yoga. But a lot of the things are more with a faster breath called the breath of fire. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you hear that? I'm sniffing in yeah. and out of my nose. Mm-hmm. Uh it can be a different speed or whatever, or intensity, but you do it with the movement. So there's there are several things that are repetitive movements, or there's also things that are very still and completely focused, um, as in regular yoga. But a lot of the things are completely different than asanas that you would recognize. Mm-hmm. But it's just like yoga, you're trying to raise all yoga. You're trying to raise your awareness, but this is this one is both based on the kundalini, which is at the base of the spine, and so a lot of a lot of the things, especially the warm ups, you're flexing the spine forward and back, or circling it. So you're starting um, at the lower parts of the spine and the chakras they call them, and trying to bring the energy up, up your body. So using the the locks, the mula bandha, and the root lock, and the navel lock, also the chin lock, the, all the the bandhas and locks, which is a whole other subject. Some some of, most people out there will know what they are, mm-hmm. but they're holding in in the energy, and they're also drawing the energy up up the body. We're trying to raise that, so it's because like heat rises, right? So we're warming up the body and letting the Again, the dormant energy that is can be stuck or just resting or sleeping to raise to come up our body and wake us up. Beautiful. So we can well, be we definitely <laughs> yes, we definitely look forward to uh, you also offering that as a practice there as a um, as part of your practice there. So we are getting ready to go to another commercial break and. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I was reading in one of your blogs that you really like Yoda, and you have quoted some (laughs) of his sayings uh, that you really love. You will find only what you bring in is one of your favorites, and Mm -hmm. then you go on and talked a little bit about um, how finding our inner teacher uh, and you were saying that when you learn something new, you usually feel a need to share. Um, and I really liked how you wrote it. And you said, um, I, lo- I teach things I love practicing. Always pass on what you have learned is another quote from Master Yoga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, and thank you for that, uh, even that, that reminder that you have uh, on your website there. That's, I, I especially enjoyed that article also uh, between uh, you were talking about the master and the student, and it, it was also a very, very well-written um, article. So uh, when you come back, thank you. Uh, I would enjoy, uh, you can... I'm going to open it up if there's anything you would like to particularly tell the listening audience about. And also to tell us about um, your experiences in visiting Thailand, uh, what that means as part of this practice, and then introducing to uh, the listening audience that you have a January 2019 Thailand retreat coming up. 
And uh, for those uh, who possibly might be interested in going and learning about these retreats, what are you going to be offering there? Okay, so okay. we will be back again in about four minutes. Thank you. Hello and welcome. You are now entering the corridors of Twilight Epiphany Talk Radio with your host, Cindy Magnuson. Premiering Thursday evenings, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Feminine Frequency Radio Network, you are invited on a talk radio journey to the center of self. Join us as Cindy guides you, the listeners, in sensory and perception upgrades where revelations and golden epiphanies pierce the veils of illusion. Don't miss this opportunity for your next dose of Twilight Epiphany. Mother, father, teacher, healer, trendsetter, or innovator concerned with our future generation? Come join the family at Small Voices Big World, where we talk to leading experts in child development, care, compassion, friendship, and community. Join us live Saturdays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Feminine Frequency Radio Network. We hope you join us as we spark new ideas that will shape our future and the small voices that will create this big world. Organic Frequency Radio Show is one and a half hour live chat with Stephanie and Oksana and their lovely guests about the nature of existence and holistic way of living here and now and perhaps even after. Join us every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Call-in number to listen live is 929-477-1183 and to ask a question, press 1 to connect to the studio. Our guest share their stories and walking path of their healing along with services that they have developed and packaged for the rest of the world to experience and benefit from. We're here to hold a space for an exchange of experiences for the purpose of evolvement and expansion of consciousness. Feminine Frequency Radio Network hosts shows seven days a week. Call in to listen live 929-477-1183 and dial 1 to connect to the studio to ask a question or listen online via blogtalkradio.com backslash feminine frequency radio network. Okay, we are back. And as we were closing off before our last commercial here, I was asking David uh, if he would tell us about his experiences in Thailand. So uh, when I think, you know, of uh, Thai yoga massage, and of course, I go back to Thailand, and, and maybe you can tell us, is it true that Thai yoga massage was begun in India? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and the start of it, if, if you know, you're maybe aware of that, or I'm not very sure. Um, but, you know, we, what do you feel in the land there and what draws you to there and even doing a retreat there in Thailand? Yeah, we're, we went to Thailand in 2016, October, November with my teacher, and we're going to so he takes people every year. And so we decided to, we wanted to go again and we're taking a small group in which um, actually registration is just closed because we're, we need to get things moving. So, but actually Thai body works, the, 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 I guess the physical essence of it 
did start in Thailand. But the Ayurvedic or the Vedic culture in Ayurveda is sort of a mother or father to it. And uh, Don Vantari, who is the one of the gods of Ayurveda, is a medis- doctor of medicine. And he is basically um, the doctor of Ayurvedic medicine, Don Don Mantari. This is also my spiritual name, Don Mantari Das. And so that is from the Vedic culture. So that is how it is kind of brought from India to Thailand. And, of course, my teacher was uh, in the Vedic culture. He was a... Hare Krishna, and so he ne- he learned all about Vedic culture and stuff. So he sort of br- he sort of puts his flair on on this in the way he teaches and practices and shares with everybody. So that's an answer about that. So yeah, well, our Thailand tour that we took was amazing. There were several amazing things. Of course, the, the elephant, the the cat. Cat Cafe was most... I had never learned, heard about a Cat Cafe. They have them on in California and New York, but this is the first time I had ever heard of a Cat Cafe where they have cats. You, they're wandering around while you can have your coffee and eat your, you know, stuff. <laughs> and so cool. we were just intrigued. We were just intrigued to go to this Cat Cafe in Thailand. Have to, we had to go, you know, halfway around the world to see this wonderful thing. <laughs> And they do have them in the United States. But they're not in Dallas, so, you know, they're not near us. Mm -hmm. So that was a fantastic part of our trip. And, of course, the Elephant Sanctuary, where it's very interesting because in Thailand, in, 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 in Thai body work, my teacher calls it the Elephant Walk, where mm-hmm. you're going side to side, alternate, it's an alternating palm walk, like you would do on legs or arms or feet. Alternating side to side, pressing here, press, pressing one hand down as the other one comes up, one other hand down as the other hand comes up. It's going side to side like an elephant walk, or even it's called a mystic penguin, mystical penguin, he calls it. So hmm. this place in Thailand was an elephant sanctuary where they don't ride the animals, they don't want to work them, but we feed them and we play with them. And there was an elephant there that was two weeks and one day old. Little baby elephant, so cute. So we're going to go back and see how that that little baby has grown. And another wonderful place was called the Elephant Poo Poo Paper Park. So elephants drop these big things. They're about the half of si- half of the size of a bowling ball, maybe like a big softball. Of, <laughs> you know, they're, they're droppings. They're poop, and they're full of grass and straw. And they take this droppings and they boil them to get the stinky out of them. And they use the straw to make paper. And that's a whole part where they show how they do that. And we actually made paper and got to buy some things that they also make with these, with these paper products from the elephant poop. So it's a very, it's a very fun and funny um, part of our trip. It was really wonderful. Yeah, that's Excuse awesome. <laughs> I also want to go. <laughs> yeah. How exciting. Uh, so I take it cats are just running around uh, in the cafe there, huh? Just loose. Yeah, they have, you know, cats, you know, little cat things that they can climb on, on the wall. Oh. And, of course, when they're feeding, they all come down and get the food. But, yeah, you can you can go and they let you. Pet the cat if they're interested in you, you know. Of course, you know how cats can be kind of finicky. But we stayed, sure. there, for, we stayed there for over three hours just oh my, taking yeah. pictures, and it was so fun. It was, yeah, that and the elephants were the highlight of the trip. And, of course, getting Thai massages every day. That was our practice. Oh, <laughs> yes. foot massages or Thai massages every day. They're like seven to ten bucks for an hour. <gasps> Oh, whoa. It's amazing. 
Oh, wow. Well, good for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so okay. we can't wait to get it again. I bet you can't, yes. Uh, so uh, I was also talking about, um, you know, your uh, space and, and how you feel about uh, being a teacher and sharing what you love. And you also had some other uh, beautiful quotes on your webpage that said, uh, Vedic Thai Yoga Massage receives the individual as a mandala, a sacred geometric design. I absolutely love that. I, you just start to envision mm-hmm. that right away. Frequently, another a person, one from Mukti, yeah. Okay. Frequently, yeah. a person expresses feelings of purified consciousness, invigorated spirit, and profound rest. And that, to me, also is completely encompassing mm-hmm. um, the, the space. Uh, it is geometrically designed within its practice the same way that yoga is practiced specifically. I especially liked you talking about the um, energetic spaces in the joints. Did you say it was called Marma? M-A-R-M-A, is it? M-A-R-M-A. Marma? Yeah, M-A-R-M-A, yes. And yes, uh, so working in those spaces, the similar, the uh, soft space in the wrist, the soft space in um, uh, the ankle space in the front of the ankle, and then uh, you know mm-hmm. we were taught to come out like rays of the sun from there. And you know, as the, the the human body is put together, and you were saying it's also in sections of threes. You know, so there are sections of threes, and like each section is uh, oh, has yeah. that jo- that joining part of the marma space. So it's an energetic collection space. There, it's beautiful. Um, and is there? Uh, can you share with us maybe some memorable experiences that you have had with this work? I know that uh, Leah was talking about uh, in her subtle touch article on how uh, even you just sometimes would touch a, a space on her foot and how energetically that released her. Uh, and of course, um, you know, that space of being able to tune in. So if, uh, you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. A lot of times I have people um, feeling uh, different emotions come up or different releases in their body uh, from me just, you know, a lot of the times I'm going to the, through the, through the motions, basically I'm going through the motions, but of course, you know, just the repetitions and the motions, I say, but I'm doing it consciously with the breath. And so mm-hmm. the way it's, the way this is designed is just magical. My teacher even says he's not even sure what happens, but just he also says wow. let a mystery be a mystery, you know. Oh, I love so it. this, so people always come to me saying it's just, it seems like so much more than a regular massage. Because we we do work with like I said the repetitions and numbers, being consistent, fluid and rhythmic, and um, there's a trust that starts to to happen. You know when when you get into this repetition and these numbers, the trust, the person might not even be aware of it consciously, but their their mind begins to trust what's happening to their body. And so mm-hmm. you, they just uh, let themselves go. Mm-hmm. They just let themselves be taken away by the by the work, by the practice. That's why a, a novice can can sometimes get the same experience out of someone as a professional. You know, can still yes. get the releases when they're when they're doing it. So that's why this is wonderful for everybody to learn and anybody if they're interested in it interested in connecting and feeling good in their bodies they it's very fun to learn and to practice so 
It is absolutely a receiving space as we are practicing. I I am I was amazed. Of course, past the first four four day course where my muscles mm-hmm. were adjusting to positions and my mind oh, yeah. was, of course, naturally overloaded with information o- overextended. You know, I couldn't I handle know. it anymore. The, I think the third day I said, I'm at a level here where there's no more room. I just have to kind of glide a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. but the, the space just generates such a different palpable feeling. I had, by the time I was continuing to practice, each person that was receiving um, a session, I noticed they got a little bit more out of it. I was getting more into mm-hmm. their rhythm. I, I'm a, I've been an energy worker for a long time. And as I was continuing in, I felt myself being able to use both what I'm aware of in massage with pressures as well as intuition and then working with the rhythm. The rhythm was brand new to me, but when I, Mm -hmm. when I find it and I'm in it, it is so powerful. And one woman um, got up and she said, I don't know how to describe it, but I feel (laughs) loved she said, I feel loved in a way that I, I haven't felt love before. And, and and it was, and I was, I had received that same space with it. So, uh, and what, of course, do they first usually say, well, in the beginning there's, because I'm practicing, they get up and they probably still say this to you. Aren't you tired from doing all that work? Uh huh. Yeah. Do you hear that a yeah. lot? Yes, they'll say. I do. Yeah. Yeah. How how could you do that? And I will definitely say that there were positions that I needed to work with in uh, my back, low back, being mm-hmm. relaxed, and you know even being able to relax the diaphragm and the abdominal muscles so that my my low back would be in the right position, and I was doing full breathing. So there were some positions there, but I'm energized after it. I may feel muscular fatigue yeah. a little ways down the line, yeah. but there is a presence that is just pure. And um, it's fun to give a session. And, it and is I so wanted much to, fun, yes. It is fun to give these sessions. And, uh, and yet... The workout part of it, I don't feel as much during it because you are working in those specific positions to just allow yourself to sway into the movement. Of course, use your body work as opposed to, um, you know, you exerting the force from a smaller part of your body and not your core. Uh, But when you're in that uh, you know, the fatigue of the muscles doesn't happen for me maybe till the next day. So there was definitely a yeah. lot of adjusting. Uh, and, of course, I myself need to be in a little bit better practice myself uh, for all, all, all my exercise in space. I'm still working on increasing my balance. Uh, but it's remarkably beautiful. So I love it for that. So uh, anyone who has the opportunity to learn and um, go to, you know, to uh, visit you there and learn with you. I highly recommend it. Uh, It appears to be a little bit newer on the scene. And, um, you know, we we tend to, as healers, always keep adding something, you know, Uh, and I'm really happy to have, you know, wandered into this through this, you know, thread of connection here, because I feel at home. And uh, as we well know in the healing equation, it's, and you said this on your website, and I appreciate you deeply for this expression, that we're not even saying that these are the best healing techniques. We are aware that it's an equation between the person receiving and the person giving and divinity that comes together. And when that's right in the Mm -hmm. right timing, it's a beautiful blend. 
So we happen to have found our home space here. And you even wondering, you know, going into Kundalini Yoga now, another expression to bring in. And it's it, and we yeah. sort of blend every blend everything together. And uh, it's that that place of presence. Um, when I say, you know, we think about unconditional love, I think of it as a space of when I'm present with my the person I'm working with uh, receiving, I want to not have any conditions here. So, and you are working with still, and myself as a beginner, of course, I'm still trying to remember the next move. And so there's some linear, you know, linear mm-hmm. data taking place, some left brain logical space, as well as I'm also remembering feelings that I had as I did a certain pressure and the person re- tissues responded a certain way or their breathing responded a different way. So of course, in the beginning here is I'm learning it, which is wonderful being a newbie because you know, you're so heightened to these spaces and uh, uh, then to ask them afterwards, what were you feeling when I was doing this and this? You know, and, and then we build up our inner witness to, uh, as a practitioner, okay, so when I felt that, that's what it means. And it's such a divine space. So there's so much going on in there. You really don't have time to let a whole lot else in, in a sense. So you're better <laughs> off, you know, just just staying in it because there's so much going on at once be- between, you know. And, and, of course, this does happen in, in any kind of a practice. But I found that I um, really was able to have to practice presence it was even more commanded from me to be present so um, I enjoyed the energetic connection so much so um, David uh, I would like you to uh, tell the listeners um, uh, if you will how they can connect with you uh, I do have it listed on my Facebook page and such and such, but there may be some people here who ha- who are uh, just uh, not on Facebook and come to you from different ways. So can you uh, tell them how to reach you? Uh, yes. You know, our website is um, Thai Love Yoga. So ThaiLoveYoga.com, which is Thai as in part of Thailand, T-H-A-I, and then the word love. And then the word yoga dot com, and that'll get you to us. And our phone number is on there. Um, we're in Dallas, Texas, um, and yeah, we have. Uh, we're actually on our way to teach at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. So if you're in upstate New York, oh boy, you can do that. You can do that. So it's north of Albany. And it's called Lake George, and we're going to be there Sunday morning teaching five different classes, um, five different one-hour classes, some in the morning, some in the afternoon. We just, actually, we just got word of that two days ago. We were oh, going to go anyway. And we, <laughs> we, used, we were going to go anyway because we applied. We went last year, and they just now got back to us saying we can do it. So we're excited about that. But you, um, we have two upcoming courses in Dallas. One is September 7th through the 9th. It's a three-day class. And then the next one is November 3rd and 4th. It's a two-day class. Those are the, the bulk of what we <coughs> uh, teach. Uh, 24 hours, which is two days, or um, no, 16 hours, or 24 hours is three days. And we will do learn our entire sequence, different sequences for the different uh, courses. Some of the stuff is the same. Most of it is different. And mm. um, so it's really not, like you said, it's a lot of information. You were in a four-day class, you said? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was in a seven-day class. And it, it was just a lot of stuff. And I, but I just kept going back and kept practicing and of course, I heard from one of my community teachers who says, if you want to master something, you need to teach it. So I started teaching yoga, and 
uh, well, I still haven't mastered it after 22 years, and I'm <laughs> definitely not going to master Thai massage after <laughs> a few, a few years. So I still do, you know, I still. Uh, some days I'm on, some days I'm off. So, but I love sure. teaching, and I always learn something from it. And Leah is the most amazing uh, teacher, also, because yes. she, like I said, keeps me on track. And it's so much fun to be around her. She supports me, and I wouldn't be the person I am without her. And Aww. I'm so grateful and loving, loving her. Oh, wonderful. And then both of you are also available to be invited to any state to teach your courses, correct? Yeah, we'll go pretty much anywhere. Uh, okay. Any, any so country, if anyone's any out there. time. Mm-hmm. That maybe okay. Antarctica. <laughs> 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 yeah, so well, in case anyone's listening there, you both are available. Uh, you have a variety of what you teach. Um, and I, boy, I would, I definitely know it is in my bucket list and I will be there. So you can count on it. I will be on your doorstep someday. <laughs> I will let you know I'm coming. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I am really grateful to, to share this with you. And uh, excited that you are in the beginning stages of your learning. And I know you're going to have a, a more of a wonderful time as you learn more and more. It's, it's great. Thank you. And um, is there anything else that you would like to um, leave with any parting words? Is there anything that I didn't get to maybe that you wanted to say? Or are we feeling good? I think we're feeling good. I probably would go on and on if you let me, but <laughs> oh. <need> that. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, you're more than welcome to come back on again sometime, and um, maybe perhaps we will have Leah do some talking too. Um, she has yeah. a very um, remarkable list of work that she does here. As I was reading through it, um, I read it earlier yeah. for all of the different work she does, which is also light massage and stretching and breath work. Uh, and I loved reading about how she loves the tuning forks and sound and the gong does it for her. So you both have yeah. a wonderful variety there, a wonderful relationship and, um, I'm very happy that you accepted my invitation to come on the show and share with our audience here. So I thank you very much, David. I thank you, too. And also okay. Leah, she's sitting right here, too. Thanks. Thank you, Leah. Bye-bye. And I will, Bye-bye. Um, I will be in touch personally with both of you. Thank okay. you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. So signing off here, uh, my name is Cindy Magnuson again. I am the owner of Sea Source Energy Epiphanies and founder of the Sea Technique EFT Plus. And you can find my work at theseatechnique.com. So thank you all. Much love to you. And we will see you next week. <laughs>